Hello, I'm Andrew, and in this video you're going to see me cook a lot of potato recipes. This is part of an ongoing series on the channel where I cook a large amount of one ingredient in an effort to explore recipes I've never tried before, not always getting exactly right, but there's something interesting about experiencing the same ingredient over and over that I think can teach you a lot about how that ingredient works. The first video in this series was about potatoes, and there are just so many uses for potato out there that I wanted to do a follow-up video with recipes recommended by viewers with an emphasis on styles and cuisines that I've never tried before. So I've already made all of those recipes, and now I'm gonna take you through how those experiences went. The first thing I made was pasta y patate. Potatoes and pasta, two things which I previously did not think belonged in the same dish, but rather filled a similar role. And I reference recipes from the TikTok account of Chef Max Mariola and the website Memories D'Angelina. I began by dicing guanciale, the cured pork cheek, and rendering its fat in a deep pot. And this is a dish for which I found a lot of recipes with slight variations. Some were all vegetarian, some asked for a pancetta, some only used onion and celery without the carrot. But I think this highlights the fact that this dish is meant to be made with whatever is available and is a comforting home-style cooking at its core. When the sofrito was thoroughly cooked, I added potato, which I diced into small cubes. And while that was cooking, I prepared the pasta, which I learned is meant to be essentially a combination of all the little bits of leftover pasta that you have, broken up if necessary to all be approximately the same size, called pasta mista. Everything gets cooked together in the same pot so that as the potato and pasta are cooking, they're releasing their starch to make a very creamy final texture. When everything was finally cooked, I add some diced provolone off heat just before serving. This was extremely tasty. Very creamy, warm, cheesy, delicious. There's all that flavor that's built up in the background. It actually reminded me a lot of congee in the way that it's a dish where the starch is broken down to make it a creamy sort of like porridge texture. It's very tasty. The next dish I made was a Peruvian dish called Papa a la Huancaina. For this dish, I referenced a recipe from Ricardo Zarate's book, The Fire of Peru. This dish is primarily a sauce to accompany simply prepared potatoes. So I began by sauteing onion in a pan with plenty of oil, along with aji amarillo, a yellow pepper paste that is essential to Peruvian cuisine. In the meantime, I soaked some saltine crackers in evaporated milk. And when the onions were cooked, I added all of this to a blender along with queso fresco and blended until thoroughly smooth. And that's the sauce. For the potatoes, I simply boiled them whole, peeled and sliced them, and then smothered in that sauce. I mean, I didn't need reminding that potatoes go excellently with a cheese sauce, but this sauce is really incredible. The aji amarillo does so much heavy lifting because it has such a concentrated pepper flavor to it. It's spicy, but not too much. It's cheesy, but not overwhelming. It actually reminded me a lot of eating cheesy broccoli as a child. So naturally I tried that and it was excellent. I really want to put it on everything. Next, I made an Indonesian dish called Perkadel Kentang. And I referenced a recipe from Divina Hermawan on YouTube. This dish is sort of a fritter made of leftover mashed potato and other ingredients. So I began by sauteing whole shallot and garlic that I then crushed in a mortar and pestle. Many recipes that I saw fried the potatoes before mashing, but I boiled them as Davina does in her recipe. And to those, I added the shallot and garlic, as well as a particular type of celery and green onion, curry powder, and the binding ingredients, egg and tapioca flour. This recipe also differed from a few others in that you use two forks to create a rough shape rather than the sort of smooth, ball shape that you would get if you were forming them by hand, which appealed to me a lot. My first couple also did not hold together very well, which I just chalk up to the proportion of potato and the starch content of what I had, but I adjusted the amount of flour used and they turned out great. These were really good. I mean, there's so many ways to use leftover mashed potatoes, but I'm always thrilled to have another. And I don't think I achieved quite the level of crunchy exterior as there were in the original recipe, but you still had that satisfying, almost like fried potato skin outside with the smooth, flavorful mashed potato inside. That's just, it's peak potato. The next dish I made was the Bengali alu posto. And I referenced a recipe from the YouTube channel, Bong Eats. This is a potato cooked in poppy seed 
paste, which I found very intriguing because I've eaten a lot of poppy seed throughout my life. So I started by soaking white poppy seed in water overnight so that it would be soft enough the next day to blend into a paste. To that paste, I also added a couple of green chilies. Then in a pan with plenty of oil, I added black nigella seed as well as some dried red chili. And then I added the potato until it was softened, but not browned at all. So continuous stirring was necessary. Then the poppy seed paste gets added and cooked until the moisture is evaporated. It's cooked and the potatoes are cooked as well. This is also seasoned with salt and sugar. I like this dish a lot. I also can't help but be reminded of potato salad a little bit in the way that you have that sort of potato starch and paste semi mashed mixture on everything. And I liked how specific the flavor was. A lot of Ukrainian desserts feature black poppy seed paste. Although it's not exactly the same, the flavor is reminiscent and it's really interesting for me to eat in this savory context. And so I'm really grateful to have been suggested this and I thought it was really delicious. The last thing I made was stir fried shredded potato that I referenced from the YouTube channel of Chef Wong. The first job was to slice the potato into a very thin julienne. So I started by cutting it into planks and then following Chef Wong's technique, fanning those planks out like a deck of cards and then slicing them into thin sticks with a push cut. And this is a scenario where even though I have a pretty flat knife, I can tell that the job would be so much easier if I had the sort of perfectly horizontal cleaver like Chef Wong does. All of that potato is then washed in cold water and drained and repeated several times until as much starch can be washed away as possible. The rest of the preparation needs to happen pretty quickly to preserve the potato's texture, so I made sure that I had everything set in advance. I briefly blanched the potato in boiling water for just a minute or so and then strained. Then in my heavy steel pan, I heated oil until it was quite hot, added dried red chili, and then the potato immediately, quickly stirring and tossing it. And this was then seasoned with soy sauce, vinegar, sugar, and salt, and finally tossed with green onion right before it was done. And all of this just taking a minute or two, so as to preserve that potato texture as Chef Wong instructs. I've for a long time had this curiosity of how much a potato needs to be cooked to be cooked. Like, why can't I eat a potato like an apple? Because so often recipes cook potato until it's the point of being completely soft. But this is a dish that actually specifies that the potato should still have sort of a toothsome, like al dente texture to it, which I really love. It's overall very aromatic, the way that soy sauce and vinegar gets when cooked at a high heat. It's a little spicy, but it still sort of has this taste of potato, which I really love that I can't quite put my finger on, but it seems to go away when potato is more thoroughly cooked, uh, which I thought was really great. So those are the potato recipes I cooked. I'm very grateful for all the recommendations I got. There are countless potato recipes out there, but if you have more suggestions for other ingredients or recipes I should try, I would love to hear them. Thanks for watching.